So welcome everyone to Psalms for Life, in which we explore a different psalm each week uh, using insights from Rev. Nachman of Breslov and other sages and Sadiqim. And the class is sponsored by Esther Elagorovich. We want to thank her for her sponsorship. And it should be a merit and a source of bracha for her and her entire family. Also, today's class is dedicated to Israel. It is dedicated to um, the soldiers. It is dedicated to the hostages. And if you don't mind, I just want to call out a couple of names that are in my prayers. Um, I have quite a few, but I'm just going to do a few right at this moment. Two soldiers. One is Nir Ben Nurit. And also Yehuda ben Livnat, may this class be a merit for them. And also, please, may this class be a merit for the return of all the hostages. And today, my heart, and I'm sure your hearts are with the Bibas family, with Shiri, Yardane, Ariel, and baby Kafir. Um, I, I don't think any one of us can, can be... Um, can be at peace. I don't think any one of us can be at peace until baby Kafir is returned home. And so may this class be a benefit, uh, uh, a merit from it. Also, also please Hashem for the protection of Aiden Ben Tamar. May he, um, I believe he's a soldier and may he also um, be safe and return home to his family as well. And of course, may there be victory and success. I know victory isn't a politically correct word, but that's exactly what we need. Okay. So today's song is Psalm 41. And it is a statement of faith and appreciation for Hashem. That's the general segula, but we will learn as we go through it that it's actually a segula for a lot more. Um, this psalm Rebbe Nachman chose is the second psalm of Tikkun HaKlali. Now, generally, when we do a psalm from Tikkun, uh, third, excuse me, the third psalm in Tikkun HaKlali, I apologize. Generally, when we do a Psalm from Tikkun HaKlali. I give a little talk on Tikkun HaKlali separately, but this time we're not because we're doing a couple of those psalms in a row. This psalm is also the last of the four psalms, 39 through 41, that David wrote as a description of his healing from his illness and his thankfulness to Hashem. And this includes spiritual illness and healing as well. Um, and also, this psalm is the conclusion of the first book of the five books of Psalms. The Psalms are divided into five books, as you know. And because this was uh, is a psalm of gratitude towards Hashem, this psalm is a very fitting ending for an entire book of Psalms. Now, Rebbe Nachman explains that this psalm has four of the 10 types of songs in it. The 10 types of songs that are remedies in Tikkun HaKlali, the universal remedy. We know that Tikkun HaKlali is a remedy for all kinds of spiritual, um, spiritual suffering, spiritual transgressions and so on, especially the transgression of any kind of immorality. And that there are 10 types of songs or 10 types of psalms that are able to undo the poison, as Rabbi Nachman calls it, of those missteps that we make, which is why it's important, if possible, to say Tikkun HaKlali every day. And if not, to try to say it at least once a week. And Psalm 41 contains four types of song, and I just want to briefly go over them. Nitsuach, Mizmor, Ashrei, and Bracha. Okay, now, Nitsuach, excuse me one minute, I apologize. Um, just had to make Naomi co-host. 
Um, let's start with, um, actually, with, we'll start with Nitsuach. So Nitsuach is a type of song that is un, that is able to um, undo cor- what is called corrupted flesh, okay? And this is the corrupted flesh from the era of the Mabul, the era of pre-flood, pre-Mabul. And this includes all of us because in some way, because that in itself is a type of exile, the destruction of the earth, in some way we still have a connection to this. So this heals that kind of rupture of the flesh, okay, rupture of the body and soul. The next type of um, song it's associated with is bracha. And bracha is a um, type of um, song that contains the remedy, the medicine of holiness, holy advice and guidance. So we know there's a lot of holiness and advice and guidance in this song. The next type of song that's associated with this psalm is ashray. And ashray, we know, means joy and happiness, which is the antidote okay it's the antidote to whatever ails you and immoral transgressions of various types are actually the cause of most depression and happiness itself is the antidote and this song confers happiness on the person this psalm or song and then the last one um is what did i miss is okay is mismore and mismore which we've heard this term a lot throughout psalms is um it, the concept of song that is brought in the night by the way so is bracha as well these are songs that heal the negative energy of the nighttime and we all know that the nighttime is when our defenses are gone because not only do we sleep at night in which we are defenseless but also we also relax at night before we go to sleep and this can lead this can lead to having our guards lowered against making some bad mistakes. Okay. All right. So um, let's begin with the verses of this song. One moment, please. Okay. Laminat seach mizmor le David. Okay, that's uh, verse one for the conductor, a psalm by David, and we heard the word, um, we heard the word mismor, so we, we're familiar with that already. And then we go to another term, Ashrei maskil eldal biyom ra'a yimal tehu Adonai. Praiseworthy or happy is he who contemplates, who thinks about the poor, the needy, the sick, on the day of evil, Hashem is going to set him free. So Rebbe Nachman tells us that the word here, Ashrei Maskil, means that somebody is wisely considering and planning on how to help a sick or pers- poor person, getting involved in that person's needs, okay? Jumping in and giving and doing, okay? It's very interesting because this can have a deeper meaning or a more psycho-spiritual meaning of we should take care of our own needs and we should also take care of the spiritual poor poverty and spiritual sickness of ourselves and others. But Rebbe Nachman is saying this simple, simple, simple shot. You see a sick or poor person, go help them. Do what you can for them. There are many reasons for it. Rabbi Nachman explains that Hashem is going to protect the person who does Bikr Cholim, who visits the sick. Um, he is protected from his enemies. It's very praiseworthy. Now, it's interesting also because we should remember any difficulties that we're in that make us feel like a doll 
like a destitute or poor or deprived or sick person. And we should take a lesson from this psalm. So as we go through the verses, each one of us has areas in our lives where we feel either materially or physically or spiritually lacking. And this psalm is an antidote for that. As I kind of mentioned in the beginning, it's a remedy that, that Rebbe Nachman chose very specifically. Okay, now, Rav Hirsch always has something interesting to say. We're going to move from the term maskil to the term dal. He says that dal is a person who's been brought low, and he mentions by financial reverses, by financial struggles first, and by physical illness second. And this constitutes calling someone impoverished. And we know that the Talmud says that a poor person is like a person who is dead. Okay. That's what a Talmud says. Somebody struggles financially. And therefore, the Rebbe is telling us the way to revive ourselves. Rebbe Nachman, I'm going back to him. The way to revive ourselves is to jump in and help someone, again, impoverished, whether in health, financially, spiritually too, but here it's specifically Rob Hirsch is talking about financially, and to go in and jump in and help someone. And what will that do? Well, Rebbe Nachman says that's going to save you from your enemies. Very interesting. And as we read through this uh, chapter of Tehillim, this Psalm, Psalm 41, we are going to see something interesting that it talks about one's enemies in the first part of this Psalm and in the second part of the psalm it thanks Hashem for taking away those enemies okay and the enemies here that David is speaking about is real life material flesh and blood enemies we've discussed its history so many times in this class over the past year or so but also it also can refer to your own your own enemies. What are your enemies? So we always say the Yitzhahara, but what we mean by that is those bad habits, those, those rigid ways of thinking that don't allow you to open up to Amuna, the kinds of inner enemies that pull you down towards depression. Okay, we, we are combating those as well. But on the shot, go help a sick or poor person, and it's going to really help you. Okay. Um, Continue. See. Okay. Adonai Yishmarehu, vi hayehu, the ushar ba'aretz, va'al titanehu benefesh olav. Okay. So Hashem will preserve him and restore him to life, and he will be happy on earth, and you will not give him over to the the will of his foes, of his enemies. So here, the first part of the Psalm, the Pshat is the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive means his life is going to be prolonged. Okay. So just in time for Hanukkah, I will add that there during the time of Hannah and her seven sons. Okay. That's a different Hannah than the, uh, than the other Hannah we know. Okay. During this time, Binyamin Hatzadig supported her and her seven sons. He, during the famine, he supported them financially. And because of that, when he had a fatal illness, Hashem granted him an additional 22 years of life. Okay, so there is a connection between supporting others and long life. Now, um, I mentioned before that the Talmud, which it says it in a couple of places, okay, that a poor person is considered as one who is dead, but one who helps someone overcome their poverty, okay, saves them, whether in a time of famine or any financial difficulties, it's as if they literally saved a life and they are greatly rewarded with not only long life, but also, says the Talmud, financial success, okay? Something to keep in mind. Um, let's continue. And, and again, today we're gonna do a mixture of the 
of the pshad and the, the deeper meanings of this psalm. Sometimes we just sort of head in one direction or another. Um, but I, I think it's important right now because we are all looking for um, merits. We're looking for um, mitzvos, mitzvot to do uh, in the merit of Klal Yisrael, hostages and so on. The merit of chesed is perhaps the greatest merit of all. There's so many merits, but perhaps one of the greatest mm -hmm. mitzvahs of all. Okay. Um, we'll continue. Adonai Yisadenu al eres davai kol mishkavo hafachta vechalio. Okay. Ha Hashem is going to fortify him on his bed of misery and all his rest has been transformed by his governments. So what it's saying here is that the person is suffering in the person's miserable. He's suffering in his bed. Okay. Whether it's again, a physical or financial or other illness and he can't rest. Okay. It's, it's you know, I'll tell you something I read. I think it was last night, the, the way they're torturing the hostages, the children, especially, but I read one of the things doesn't sound so bad, but for 50 days, elderly people, young people had to sleep on plastic chairs covered by a sheet. Okay. There's no rest in that. All right. It, it's, it's not something that promotes rest. There, this, you know, one night. Okay. If you ever been stuck in an airport overnight, but, but over a month. Okay. So we can imagine and put ourselves use our imaginations not only in the situations all the various terrible things that they had to suffer but even these seemingly minor things cause restlessness a lack of being able to just sit and be without fear or discomfort so that's like the the suffering of a of a sick person and again it's like the suffering of a poor person they always have that weight hanging over their head how am i going to pay the rent how am i going to do this and so on again akin to sleeping in a plastic chair obviously not kidnapped but but again it's a restlessness okay um okay all right uh, we are up to hey, um, ani amarti Adonai chaneni refa'a nafshi ki hatasi lach. As for me, when I was sick, I said, Hashem, show me your grace, your graciousness, your favor. Heal my soul, for I have transgressed against you. So the sick person speaks, heal my soul, bring me spiritual healing, because a sick person understands, a sick Jew, okay, understands that any illness came about because of some disconnect with Hashem, with one's source, with one's spiritual mission, and so on. Any illness that a person has, has a spiritual root. It may not be a very apparent direct cause, but it's absolutely a correlation. And um, for, for a long time, I, I did a few years course on, on this topic of healing. We started up again uh, two years ago, and then I got sick. And I can tell you that examining oneself when one is sick takes a different type of self-examination, a different type of um, in-depth kind of heat bodedut, okay? And it it's quite astonishing. I don't wish it on anyone. Nobody should. We should all be healthy and live till 120, but it, it causes a person to think more deeply about themselves and their lives and their connection to Hashem and what we're doing here in this world. How can we improve? Okay. How can we improve? And rather than wait till something shakes you up. Okay. Start now, start now. And, and I will say something too, that just because 
someone does have, okay, um, a financial difficulty, an illness, uh, any other problem, it it doesn't necessarily mean that they have um, that they have uh, uh, done terrible things. It can mean that according to their level, they've done terrible things. But somebody said to me, I won't name his name, but very special tzaddik got sick. And we can also look at the life of Rebbe Nachman. It doesn't necessarily mean that they've done something so terrible that an ordinary person would do. So we want to keep that in mind as well. No judgment. Okay. No judgment here. As a matter of fact, we should only judge and evaluate ourselves. And even then the Rebbe encourages us. He directs us to be gentle and loving, honest, but gentle and loving because we're all fragile, especially especially now as we are in the Havilei Mashiach, the birth pangs of the Mashiach, we have to be loving and gentle to ourselves and to each other as well, okay? Withhold that judgment if it's going to be harsh, okay? We can't, we can't take that much scrutiny today. People fall apart, okay? Um, this also harks back to the initial... Um, uh, verse, which was Ashrei Maskil, because Maskil is true wisdom, okay? True wisdom, each of us at our own level. Each of us has our own level. Okay, I'm going to continue. Oy vai yomaru ra li masai yamus va'avad shemo. Um, I'm going to read a different translation. I don't like um, translating this from here. My enemies speak evil of me. When will he die and his name be destroyed? Okay, that's self-explanatory. David is telling us what his enemies are saying about him. Um, we have to today also personally understand that um, our enemies of ourselves personally might have enemies, but it also might be our inner enemy, the one that's talking bad about ourselves we have to keep that in mind we we don't want to we don't want our inner voice to destroy our name and our reputation and our connection to Hashem people talk badly about themselves and then also we can take this to the national level we see what our enemies are doing they're insane with hatred okay and they they want us to go away and we're not going away because Hashem is with us. Thank God. Okay, I'm going to continue. Ve'im ba liros shav yidaber libo yikvats aven lo yetsei lachutz yidaber. And if one of these friends or enemies comes to visit me, he speaks insincerely, and he is there his desires to gather like malicious information so that when he goes outside, he can spread it, okay? So the al-sheikh says that he doesn't come because he cares about me. He only wants to gloat. And someone might come pretending to do the mitzvah of Bikr Cholim to a sick person or a poor person pretending to come to help them, but they are really seeking to see the lowliness of that person, the suffering of that person, so they can go out and make it even talk even more bad about that person. Now, again, we can see this at the national level, okay? Um, we can see that some of the politicians who shall remain nameless, we won't go there, but I'm specifically speaking about politicians now who have come to see Israel, have then returned or, or, or have returned and um, shouted ceasefire, which of course just hurts Israel. So we can see that's what they do. We can also do it to ourselves. God forbid any one of us should be one of the people who comes to look for the bad in someone, who comes to see someone suffering and then calls up someone and says, oh, wow, look at, look, look, this is what they're going through. Unless our motive is to help them, obviously. Okay. David suffered from this a lot. He suffered terribly for years from this. Okay. We know he suffered from his enemies. And he's, he, he sensitizes 
us to this. Okay. Um, where am I? Okay. Um, okay. Bess, um, eight. Yachad alai yislachashu kol sonai. Alai yachshavu ra'ali. So um, together, they join together against me and they whisper, all my enemies against me. They plot my harm. Okay. Um, so this is a joining of forces. We Again, I'm going to take this national. We certainly see the... Um, the uh, the Yishmael has inspired all kinds of radicals and professors and communists and antifas and BLMs. They can they they inspired everybody to join them. Okay, they were just waiting for the chance. By the way, they're waiting for permission to join together. Okay, Devar Bilial Yatsukbo Ba'ashir Shachav Lo Yosif Lakum. So. They, they, they say that the result of his his lawlessness is poured over him, and now that he is sick, he won't be able to rise anymore. So, what they're saying, what the enemies are saying, is that he's evil, the sick person, the poor person, he's evil, and now that he's ill, we don't want him to be able to recover, okay? Very disgusting behavior, gloating over someone's suffering, okay? We saw this again, I, I'm gonna bring it national. Um, we saw this again immediately, immediately after October 7th. Oh my goodness, immediately to, within minutes, okay? And we also see this, you know, on a, on a personal level. And Rebbe Nachman speaks about this. And this why this is why this psalm, one of the reasons why there's many, many, it's included in Tikkun HaKlali. And that is because it's it's showing us that when we think that we've done something less, you know, transgressed, whatever, we think that evil is, is clinging to us, okay? And therefore we can't get up. Oh, and Rebbe Nachman says that is, Definitely not the case. That is such a Yitzhahara designed to trick and trap you. Of course you can get up. Hashem is down there with us. Even when we're lowly, no matter where we are, he's with us. And so, and so we should never give up hope. And we should absolutely recognize that we can indeed get up. We can do tshuva. We can return to Hashem. Okay. I hope this isn't um, confusing to anybody. I'm going back and forth between many ways of interpreting this psalm. But um, honestly, we could spend hours on this. And I really want to get the main points of, across um, because it's it's such an important, um, all the 10 psalms are, they're all important, all 150, but all the 10 psalms have quite a power to heal. Okay. Gam ish lomi asher batach divo. Ochel lachmi, higdil alai akev. Okay, so even um, the man who's my friend in whom I trusted, he ate my bread, he has raised against me his heel, meaning to step on me. So even somebody who, who I... Um, who I was friends with has abandoned me and they plotted against me and they wanted to step on me. And in, in David's case, they ambushed him as we spoke before, such as Ahitophel and others. We've spoken about that in the past. Okay. But as you, Hashem, show me favor and stand me up, then shall I repay them. Now, this is um, this is troubling a lot of commentators, so that I may repay them. First of all, David speaking about something that sounds like revenge. How is this possible? So the Medrash, Sadia Gaon, and others say that David isn't vowing revenge. He's not so lowly. He's a tzaddik and a king. And 
and the beloved of Hashem, what he is, is he's vowing to repay their kindness with chesed. Okay. And that will cause them to do tshuva. We see this with some people. Okay. And many people we can't do chesed with because they view that as a sign of weakness. Okay. But with some people, we can do chesed to them when they're unkind or thoughtless or selfish or whatever. And it can prompt them to rethink. And I will say that on the world stage, before we go personal, we'll go national again. On the world stage, this usually is not the case when it comes to Israel because anti-Semitism is so ingrained. But there are some people who see either kindness done to them or charitable acts done to others by Israel, and they do soften in their hatred. They may even unhate. Um, sometimes they become Israel's biggest supporters. Okay, this has happened with some individuals. With us personally, what we have to understand is that we have to find different ways to do tshuva, different times, different ways for different times. We have to look at ourselves. And sometimes we need a more um, stern approach, a more, a more um, you know, strong approach, an approach that, falls on the side of Gevora. Okay. Sometimes we need that. We have to know ourselves. And very often we don't. Very often we need a loving, chesedic approach. An approach in which we say to ourselves, my heart, this is usually what Rabbi Nachman says, my heart is broken because I've distanced myself from Hashem. And I love Hashem so much. And I love myself. I love my soul. Hashem created my soul. What's not to love? I have to get back to Hashem with kindness. This isn't narcissistic, okay? It really isn't. It's recognizing that your neshama is also tender and deserving of kindness and love. And in my experience, when somebody truly understands that about themselves, they treat other people that way as well. That's my experience, okay? So if you see someone who seems to be all about themselves and treating others badly, scratch the surface and you'll find that perhaps they're very harsh with themselves. They don't show themselves chesed. They only show themselves gavor, no matter what it might look like on the surface. Their inner voice is very harsh. Okay, so, you know, we have to love each other and bring all that kindness out to one another and to ourselves. Okay, um, we're moving on to, oh, are we already up to your base? Yes, I guess we are. Okay. Bezos yadati ki hafatstabi ki lo yaria oi vi li, oi vi, excuse me, oi vi alai. So by this... I shall know that you uh, desire me and that you will not let my enemy shout happily over me. Okay. So one of the key comments that, that many make about this verse, okay, um, I, I saw a few comments about this, is that we should note that David isn't relying on his own efforts. He sees what happens. Hashem saves him. He rescues him. Um, he lifts him up. He now, David is in a position to now do chesed, even with his enemies. Okay. So, so hopefully they'll do tshuva. But even then, David isn't relying on his own efforts. Okay. He is relying on Hashem. He's saying, when this all occurs, I'll know that you are pleased with me. And when my enemy no longer is shouting at me, okay, isn't gleeful over my hardship, I'll know that Hashem, that you love me, that you're happy with me, okay? So again, this is key. We have to do, even in spiritual matters, in, well, I shouldn't say even, in all matters, material, physical, 
spiritual. We have to do our hishtatlus, our hishtatlut. We have to. But at the same time, we have to keep in mind that the outcome, even a spiritual outcome, is up to Hashem, which is why Rebbe Nachman tells us that if you fall, okay, you have a spiritual fall, spiritual descent, you're struggling, and so on, then know that you can get up, you should make a move to get up, but ultimately it's Hashem picking you up. Why? Because he's always there with you. He's always there with you. Sometimes we don't see him. Sometimes we know that there's a concealment within a concealment. We even forget to look for him. But we all have moments like that. Okay, something's going wrong and we forget about Hashem. We forget to remind ourselves Hashem's in the picture. Especially in my, uh, recently I'm dealing with a lot of bureaucracy. I'm, I'm constantly trying to remember, oh, this is also from Hashem. This is also from Hashem. Okay, it's not so easy when you're dealing with somebody that's frustrating you, but it's also from Hashem. So let's keep that in mind as well. Okay, what David's message here again is to remember it's from Hashem, any good outcome. So, and and I, because of my my innocence, my sincerity, you're going to support me and you're going to stand me up in front of you forever. So this verse, Rebbe Nachman teaches us what David's saying here. We're going to rely on him for the only comment. And that is, is that David knows that Hashem's going to support him because he's, he's a Tom. He's sincere and whole and innocent, and he's not relying on his own sechel, his own intellect to sort things out. He's relying on Hashem. He's relying on Torah, Torah wisdom. He's relying on the teachings of the tzaddikim. This is something that is the hardest lesson. It's, it's the hardest lesson for two kinds of people, smart people and dumb people. Okay, that means all of us. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying anybody here is dumb. Okay, but but it's a hard lesson to let go of our own schemes, our own plans, and to rely on what the tzaddikim say. This is why we all, every one of us needs teachers, to, not only to read the text, but also to help us understand how to apply what the tzaddikim are saying. And you yourself should be a teacher. You should, you have something, you have some knowledge of what the tzaddikim say in a specific area, make it, go to do it about it, and then go help your friend with it or help yourself with that knowledge. Okay, always make it, go to do it first if possible. And, and this idea is one of David's most special qualities. Obviously, he was brilliant. We know he was a huge, huge Torah scholar. We know he was. He learned Torah all the time. We've, we've spoken about this many times. Okay. He, he, you know, he would review in his, in his head when walking the way some men do today. They, they memorize things, whether it's Mishnayos or other things, and they repeat them to themselves as they're walking so their minds don't stray from Torah and aren't enticed by things in the outside world. Yet, David, for all his brilliance and scholarship and knowledge and wisdom and piety, Okay, he was a true chassid. He didn't rely on his own smarts. He relied on the tzaddik. He relied on Hashem. He relied on the Torah. What a lesson. Hard lesson in today's day and age where arrogance is the sort of law of the land in the Western world. Okay, we'll continue. Um, okay, uh, final verse. Baruch Adonai Elohei Yisrael. Meha olam. So blessed is Hashem, uh, the, the God of Israel, from all times past and all times in the future. In other words, eternally, amen, the amen. So this is uh, fitting into um, this book. It's an acknowledgement of Hashem's greatness and his eternality 
Um, and also we say amen. Everybody knows this, but I'm going to remind you of this. And when we say amen, it comes from the same root as emuna, And it's an affirmation that we believe that whatever was said is true. Might even come true, but is true. Okay. So that's why it's important to go to shul on Shabbos if you can. Say amen to Kaddish. Um, it's important to say amen when you hear a bracha. And I will tell you that um, when you hear a bracha or something with a, through a microphone or a video, something like this, uh, something that's not direct verse, okay, there is, some people say that halachically your amen doesn't count, and many people disagree with that. So if you hear something good, it's okay to say on me, all right? You're affirming your belief. It's fine. Now, Midrash Tanchuma says, when you say amen twice, and as one does in this final verse, it this verse specifically, but also when you say amen twice, is someone who answers amen in this world will also answer amen in the world to come. In other words, someone who is conscious to have a muna and to affirm belief in Hashem in this world is going to experience the rewards of that in the world to come. Okay, that faith, they're going to go up a level of faith. You can't even imagine what the muna looks like in the world to come. Okay, so before we go on, to the Tehillim and the Segulo for the next, for our um, Tehillim for today. I want to again thank Esther Alagorovich for sponsoring these classes. It is a big project to get through the book of Tehillim. It's, it's really special. And um, also, um, may we please see again the, I just, just the release of the hostages, please, Hashem. We should we should see it very quickly. And may we together greet Mashiach speedily in our time. Okay, you can say amen if you want. All right, I'm going to turn off the recording.